Joining me now is Petra co-founder and CEO Kim Abrams. Kim, good morning to you. Thank you for bringing us, bringing us this, this story. I, I, I wonder, all of those things I just listed out sound too good to be true. <laughs> what exactly does Petra do and what kind of technology are we talking about that can dig tunnels so effectively? Thank you so much um, and good morning. Um, I'm here to talk about our company, Petra, um, and our technology that's solving one of the biggest problems in infrastructure today, um, which is how to bury utilities underground cost effectively. You know, and, and to that end, what we've developed is, is pretty incredible. It's, it's the first tunneling robot capable of boring utility-sized tunnels through the most difficult geologies on Earth. And this just simply was not possible before. Um, and you, you might know this, but being able to bore utility tunnels through hard rock is the first step in helping utilities bury their infrastructure at scale. Um, and what we've developed is really the first new tunneling method in generations. Um, and I'm just very excited to, to launch the company today to tell you more about it. So, so Kim, Tim, we're, we're watching video right now. That's what viewers are seeing. And from listeners on SiriusXM, what, 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 what we're showing you is something that looks almost like a laser beam slash steam slash, I don't know what it is. What exactly is the technology? What does it do? How do you bore through rock the way that we're seeing right now? Yeah, so um, great question. Well, what we've developed is a non-contact tunneling robot that excavates 18 to 60 inch diameter tunnels without touching the geology in front of it. It actually looks like magic. Um, it uses a mixture of heat and high pressure to excavate rock. Um, and it's a, it's a robot, it's remotely steered from hundreds of feet away. Um, you know, it uses a mixture of our proprietary hardware and software to control the robot, um, to control its power, to control its temperature inputs, and to vary the diameter that we bore. Um, so it's all software defined. Now, now yeah. it says, we're, you're, you, Kim, you, you, we're, we're showing, it says non-contact thermal drilling. This yeah. is different than the technology that, that we've come to know as fracking, right? Hydraulic fracturing, which is how oil and gas companies kind of dig through shale rock formations. Yes, yes, it's, it's different. It, it represents a completely new way to excavate rock. You know, we're, um, and I'm actually very proud to announce that we just completed a 20 foot long, 24 inch diameter uh, demonstration tunnel in the hardest rock on earth, Sioux Quartzite. Um, it's harder than bluestone granite. Uh, it's the type of rock that has to be dynamited in order to excavate. Um, our, our team is incredibly proud of this accomplishment and it means that we can now uh, service uh, markets that have previously not been able to be serviced. So think um, uh, under, uh, underneath the existing maze of infrastructure in cities, uh, in wildfire prone mountainous areas like the Sierra Nevadas, uh, the Cascades, the Rocky Mountains. Um, we now can service these markets in underground utilities where they haven't been able to underground before. And Kim, before we let you go, I had mentioned in the introduction to you about this timing being right, given the infrastructure package being passed by Congress or having been passed by Congress. How big of a beneficiary could you be in that in that whole process? Yeah, I mean, let me start by saying that utilities and governments already spend hundreds of billions of dollars on utility on utility infrastructure annually. Um, utility infrastructure is already a very big market. Biden's infrastructure bill will be allocating even more money to modernizing our infrastructure and incentivizing us to make it more resilient. I mean, we're gonna see tens of billions of additional incentives to improve our water, sewage, wastewater, and obviously our power infrastructure as well. And if we really want to build back better, then we have to underground much of this infrastructure. It's the only way to make it resilient.